Hi guys and welcome back to yet another video. In today's video, I did recently rebuild in, well, repairing a couple of PS3s, all had disk drive faults or very minor faults which were easily fixed. Today I'm doing something quite a bit different. So here you see a bottom case of a console. Down here you see more parts of a console. The plan is today, rebuilding a PS3 from spare parts I've got. So anyone who knows me, I used to jailbreak consoles every now and then. We would have problems. So we did not have an exploit back in the day. We used to use these E3 flashes. I've got two because I used to run a dual boot console. Um, yeah, so these were pretty good bits of kit. They used to work very well. However, occasionally you did have problems. There would be odd system which wouldn't act as you want and it would accidentally brick the console. Once bricked, there are ways of repairing the consoles and unbricking them. However, for that, you need a valid uh, a dump, which is relatively good. Not You don't always have that. Sometimes the console dies before you get a dump from it. Or, like on one of them, you knock a switch to patch the gnaw with a different console's flash. Yeah, I hit the switch wrong. Should I have cleared the SD card first? Yes, but that's a different thing. So, I've got a load of spare parts for consoles. Without motherboards, so I bought this, which is coincidentally a motherboard for a console, specifically this case. So this motherboard in this box is a DIA002, so it's a later model for a CCHJ or K model console. I recently found out um, I recently found out that the CCHM has the 90 nanometer and it's a DIA001 motherboard. I've always been saying they were the shorter, the smaller CP, uh, GPU, but I was wrong. Um, so this motherboard, the case it's going in is actually from a CCHM. However, the motherboard is just a revision, so it will still fit. Um, yeah, let's get this motherboard unboxed and see if it's all good. I have purchased motherboards from the seller before, and I will say, every time I've bought from them, they have been extremely well packaged. And. This one, no exception. Absolutely no room for movement of the console in the box. And just get this out of the way because personal details. And here we go. I always like how they put the silica gel pads in here as well, just to stop the console from getting any moisture. So here we have the paired logic board with the console in an ESD bag as well. Like I say, this seller has always prepared things very well. And here is the motherboard, also in an ESD bag. Again, silica gel pads. Just place that down gently for now. And get rid of the packaging. Okay, so here are the motherboard and the daughter board taken out of the packaging. As you can see, here is the logic board or daughter board, and this is absolutely spotless, very clean, and assured that it is the paired one to the motherboard. And again, with the motherboard, this is a very clean, very, very clean motherboard, absolutely no dust anywhere to be seen on it. It's either being very well cleaned or was spotless to begin with. I feel like it could be. A mixture of both because there was not any sign of any heat damage or anything on this motherboard so there's some conformal coats and damage up here however that's the thing with the ports that get hot on this console it just happens so also the ground plane on it is also very consistent there was a small bit of discoloration however I think this is one of the cleanest motherboards for this console I've ever seen and again just try and get it in the light there we go DIA 002 so 65 nanometer RSX, which is exactly what you want, and again, reverse side of the board, also very clean. And this was over the prongs for the power supply, which basically keeps from damaging packaging, keeps it intact, sorted. Also, within the introduction, this is the case I'm going to be building the console into. Anybody who knows PlayStations will know this is not standard. This here is a LED vault that I've wired into the system, and over here, you can see that it's connected to another one which is in the LED fan, I will put a portion of the video up which is fast forwarded now of me modifying the bottom case. However, well I'll put it up after this section. So the idea with this console is I want to create a custom LED console 
the LEDs are going to be red and potentially some purple LEDs in there as well depending on how well they mix. The top case of the console will be cut as well and I want to make this one cool looking system. <laughs> the plan is to make this one cool looking system so I'll roll the clips now of me modifying the bottom case. It's painful, I'm not very good at soldering as you can potentially see there. The solder joints are not great at all, however I've tested the bottom case using the dead console and it all works. It'll be wired into the 12 volt on the fan. I released a video recently of the exact process I've done here on a different console with slightly less LEDs. Still look cool. So yeah, let's move on with the video. I'm now gonna get some parts and start putting it together because the bottom half of the console can now be assembled and tested and make sure everything works. So yeah, let's move on. Before I forget, I had taken the four screws out for connecting the fan to the base of the console, so before I make any moves, I do need to rectify that. Again, using a manual non-ratchet screwdriver because why not? This one might be awkward because of the wires. See, this is my concern. See, this is my concern with this console because I've added wires. If these wires get trapped above any of these, then that's going to cause problems later on because it's just going to trap and break the wires. My other concern is airflow. Because I've put LEDs around this area of the fan, ending about here, and the wires come up here, it does somewhat block the heat sink. And fat PS3s are not known for being the coldest running consoles on the planet. My other one, which I've done a much less aggressive LED mod on, does not show any signs at all of overheating. Considering that's an LFW console as well with standard fan curves, I'm pretty impressed at that. So, fingers crossed, this is the same. However, that one did not have any LEDs further down in the system like this one does. So the way I'll be connecting the way I'll be doing this console is so that if it gets taken apart in future you can have basically looms and loops on the system for LEDs. So this is the positive and negative for the lower console so power comes in here, flows through to here and then goes around, connects to the LEDs which are down in the fan. So all of this can be taken apart and the LEDs are not in the way. It just means you've got to unplug the connectors and plug them back in when you want to reassemble. So the first step of assembling this console is installing this metal plate here. So metal plate goes in this way round. Go make sure that none of my wires are in the way of anything. And then get slotted in as such. And my hand, that, that right there and under here is original Sony thermal paste because the console that most of the parts for this are coming from was a console that had four day runtime that ended up getting bricked. 
I only know it has four day runtime because I checked the hard drive recently and it had about 10 power cycles. Not one of my finer moments. So that is original Sony thermal paste, which is still wet, which is bonkers considering it's a 2008 console, 16 years later. So again, th the thermal pads, these normally go rigid. These are all supple and I'm not even gonna bother changing them because they seem pretty much perfect. So I can't remember if any screws need to go into this. However, I'm gonna look for any arrows and screw it in if it needs it. I have already discovered a slight fault in this corner over in the top right, the metal case is sitting on the solder joints under here. I think it'll be fine. That has plenty of play in it. That'll adjust up to the console and I th it'll be fine. It shouldn't affect anything. It won't be warping the motherboard. So we're all good. I just gotta remember not to go too tight else this corner will be pushed downwards when I screw things up. Yeah. It should be fine, I think. I can always try and adjust the solder so it's lower profile because it's not the cleanest solder job I've ever done. So, yeah. Continue putting the console together and see if it works. So, before doing anything, this is my... Basically, there's a spare place, a bunch of spare PlayStation bolts in there. Screws, bolts from other things. There's loads in there. First step for putting the thermal paste on is just ensuring that this is all clean because if it isn't clean, then you're gonna have issues with thermal conductivity. So put it back on there. Retrieve the motherboard. And just got, get some of the residue, residue off here, just make sure everything's looking all good. So once everything is all clean, the next step is to put thermal paste onto the console. Assuming the temperatures aren't Awful. I'm not going to bother dealing in the system. I'll be using Arctic MX4. Oh, faithful. I tried using MX6 and MX4 was better. Bit of a reference to another popular channel. Try and get the perfect amount. I'm always awful at it. I've put way too much on there. However, too much is better than too little. You know what? Just a good measure. Because I never trust myself with the RSXs. I always put too little on them. A little extra for good measure. So this is where I find out whether I've caused myself problems or not. So these motherboards slot in this way around and sit down like such and this one is not doing that. Quite why, I do not know. I missed that peg there and that peg there, I missed that peg. So the motherboard itself is sitting quite nicely. Now you need the metal top plate. Again, this is actually for the wrong system. This is for a CCHM, however, it will work. It just has an unnecessary hole up here for the um, CMOS battery. And again, this doesn't seem to be fitting the best. But everything else all lines up, so we get you. So next step is the fan clamps. So here I have the fan clamps. I believe these are from a slightly different model of PlayStation, however, all of them are the same, and it was actually quite a task finding the screws which aren't mullered, because these tend to seize up really badly, and I think half the ones I found were from the console which this metal casing came from. So if that is the case, then great, I can't find the other one. I've got one that's got slightly rounded heads on it. So always try and go up with a star pattern in these, just so you stress the board out as little as possible. Because at the end of the day, thermomechanical failures are what led to your light of death. And mechanical stresses are a part of this, so you want to eliminate as many stresses as possible in the motherboard. Inner engineer coming out at me there. And again, star pattern. I am slightly worried here about the board sitting on this solder over here, but everything feels fine, nothing's contorted so far, and although this one definitely needs to be whacked down more than the others. 
And this is the one with the slightly rounded head. Yeah, so I'm at the point now where I'm just going to bosh them all in. Because as soon as one of them's tight, you're, you're fine. Before I move any further with this console, I'm going to do a quick check just to make sure the motherboard and everything works. It just consists of plugging the power supply into it, turning it on, and making sure everything runs. And then the next step after that will be the screws around the edge. Okay, I ran a quick 15 second power cycle on the console, all lit up. I didn't check to see if I got a video, however, it'll be fine. It powers on, that's all I needed to see. So, the next step is to take the power supply off, which you do not see me put on <laughs> because that is not needed just yet and to get the screws in around the edge as for finding the right type of screws i found some there's probably more in there to be fair it's just my issue is more remembering where the screws go i'm just going to temporarily unplug the fan again i'm going to start with the ones that i know to be bigger screws and I'm going to start with the one I know that's going to cause problems. This corner here, I feel like, is the one that's going to cause me most issues. Because that's where the motherboard isn't sitting level. Now it's pulled down quite nicely. Those wires aren't trapped. The solder is still connected. I'll only know whether that's cause any problems later on when I plug all the LEDs in. So fingers crossed it doesn't. So I'll start with each and every corner. I will cut back once all of these screws are in. Now that the majority of those screws are in, next the USB board, which also has the Wi-Fi antenna on it, can be installed. So the routing of this is always, I find it stupid. And then you just slot it in there and then screw it up with another one of these very small screws. Have always, I've always found these screws unnecessarily fiddly and I always tend to round the heads off for them. So most of the ones I've used on this console I have actually previously rounded the heads off which is far from ideal. Also on this side of the console there is a cover that normally goes over this however I'm not going to put the cover back on as I cannot find one that's in a satisfactory condition. So yeah, that's being left off. And then also it's pretty unneeded, so there's always that. Okay, so since the last clip, this is now the next day, um, I had to take the console all back apart because under here, where the solders were contacting this metal plate, I realised that would create a short for the LEDs, so I had to insulate this corner under here, and this corner here is also isolated now so that there is no conduction of power to the metal plate because that could cause a short in the motherboard. I have also put the USB board in, like I say I'm not putting a metal cover on here because this is a ground plane anyway and putting a screw through it will not make a difference and also putting the Bluetooth or Wi-Fi antenna, I can never remember which one it is and yeah so I've reassembled it and it's all looking good. So the next step is to test the console properly and make sure everything works so getting the power supply on and getting the Blu-ray drive which is here. So I need to take the Blu-ray drive apart and change out the logic board. So that is the next step. So first of all, I'll get the console put back together and then I shall take apart the, mother the Blu-ray drive and replace the logic board because the logic boards are paired with the motherboard. I may use the disk drive out of another console. I'm not sure whether it works or not, this one. So yeah. So I'll cut back in a minute and do a fast forward bit of putting this console together more to test it. Okay, 
So whilst disassembling this disk drive, I spotted that there was a screw missing, which means that this may have been a disk drive that I took apart to take a laser out of. So I'll continue taking it apart, I'll clean the laser, and I'll see if I can reassemble it. If it doesn't work, I will just have to use a disk drive from a different console. So, I mean, I'm going to continue using this one because I've already started disassembling it, and I've got to take it apart another console to test otherwise. So I'll continue taking this console apart, change the logic board over, and continue from there. Looking at the state of this, it might not have been me that took this apart before. So this may have been dismantled by somebody else, because I never mull of these that badly. That is annihilated. Also, there's a nice dent here. Yeah, you can definitely see it on camera. That's not really a problem, as I will be potentially cutting this anyway to expose what's inside. And I assume the red sticker here also means that it's faulty. So we'll see. I'm going to test it anyway because I'm stubborn. Should also be worth noting, I do know what console this is from. This is from a CCH K03, which I have, which is Yellow Light of Death. So, I remember that one, which is good. Okay, upon inspecting the disk drive, everything actually looks okay. I have took it apart, the laser looks clean, so I am going to test it with the new logic board in. I just need to continue reassembling it, and yeah, so I'll fast forward to the point where that's all together. Now I should find another one of these screws, which I should have somewhere, and put this back together fully. That took me a solid five minutes, but I found it. Just in the Chinese tub of screws, there was one in there. there was, well, there was only one, and I found it. And that is screwing into nothing. Okay, this might be why there was no screw in here. Oh, maybe, maybe. Uh, it slipped out of the uh, the clip. Oh, so is the other side. Oh no, the other side went in. Oh, 
I've, like I say, I've got a feeling I'm going to absolutely ping that screw accidentally. Right, there we go. Okay, so there is one complete disk drive apart from this, which goes under there, which you can't see, but being left-handed is really awkward when you're filming things from the right. Okay, that does not look like it's in properly, but I do remember struggling with this on a 60 gig. It didn't look like it lined up, but it was. There we go. You know what? That'll do. There we go, there's one reassembled disk drive. The tape I've took off of there anyway. I'm gonna take the rest of well, I'm gonna take this bit off at minimum. You know what? It doesn't matter, it's underneath. I will find new tape to put on there, however, it's not really all that important, so back to the console. Okay, so the PS3 is reassembled enough to test. All the screws are done up because I know the motherboard works and I'm not gonna to have to take it out again. And all wires and cabling is insulated. So up next. I'm going to test the console, so I've got 4.91 OFW on here, so plug the USB into the furthest to the right slot, and on boot that should do it. And so up next I need to put the hard drive in, as this is an 80 gig unit, that's not enough. Um, the motherboard was even from a 40 gig, and I've got this, this is a Samsung SSD, it's only 120 gig, however that's all I've got at the minute spare. I potentially have a 500 gig somewhere, however, I cannot find it for the life of me. So I'm going to take the Samsung SSD out of here and put it in the hard drive caddy for one of this model, which I also have to find, so I'll find that and I'll be back. Okay, so I have found a hard drive caddy and now I just need to get this SSD out of here. Which I remember not doing the screws up very tight at all because these are very prone to rounding off. So you just need to undo all of these and transfer it over to the other caddy without dropping any of the screws. I caught that one luckily. And yet, yet again, sorry if you can hear my chair squeaking. These GTO Mega chairs are awful for squeaking. Okay, so there is the hard drive out of the caddy. That now needs to be transferred over to this caddy. So prefer it would be. be Preferably being a bit more gentle than I'm being, but, oh well. Yeah, this might be slightly out of view for you guys. Because it's very hard to get the camera, where I've got the camera, there's not much room. Oh, 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 oh. Thread might be, no, thread's the same. I, I just have a really bad habit of borderline cross-threading screws. All right. Let's get this one onto here as well. Okay, so here we go. I've got the hard drive, well, SSD transferred over to the correct caddy for the console. So the next step, just carefully move the console around, insert this. And here we go. I'm not going to bother screwing it up just yet. The console is in a position now where I can test it. So let's just plug it in quickly and I'll install the OFW and yeah, we'll see how we go. Okay, so I have the console plugged in at the back. Let's turn it on. There we go, we've got a red light, power button. All right, it seems to be powering up. And um, just seeing if we have a display. Yep, it says please connect to the power, please connect to the controller. So the next step is connect the controller and get OFW installed. Okay, so to get the OFW installed, Press the the PS button to get the controller started and then select and start. Basically just a case of following the steps on the screen and then waiting for it to finish saying checking please wait. Because it's then got to reset the um, hard drive that's in it because it has been installed in another console previously. 
uh, no applicable update was found, which could mean that the logic board is not connected properly. So I'll try again now and see what it does. So if it doesn't pick it up this time, then I'll check the format on the USB because I believe I might have actually changed the format on the USB. USB is supposed to be set to FAT32 and I believe I might have changed it to try PS4 chair for it recently. Which will potentially be another one coming up soon if I can sort it. So I'm going to fix the USB and try again. As you guys can see here, the format of the USB drive is XFAT and so at some point I reformat the USB. That is why the PS3 did not pick it up. To reformat, simply right click and click format and then change the format here to FAT32 because that is the system, that's what the PS3 can read. It will restore all data so make sure you back your data up elsewhere first. There you go, as you can see format complete. So I can close that now, I can cut these and then paste them back onto the USB drive. Which might take a while and then transfer it back over to the PS3 and that should be sorted. Okay now that I've reformatted the USB drive let's see if it will work this time. Again select and start. The console will check and do things. Just yep yeah. he'll do it eventually. I don't remember these consoles being so slow but I guess the side, the side of it is this is a 2008 system as I'm used to that and that. <laughs> so it definitely takes time. So it will also have to reformat the hard drive as well. Okay, there we go. It has done it, it's spotted it. So select and start now for five seconds to format the drive. Okay, now checking. And again, I'll probably end up fast forwarding this because this bit will take a while. After this phase, I should be able to use the capture as well, so no more recording this with a phone. At least phones these days are good quality. And checking, please wait. It's very difficult to hold a phone still for this long, but there we go, we are now formatting the system. So I'll fast forward this and cut back when it's done. If you heard some random noises during that, my neighbour does have chickens, chickens and they were making noise. So yeah, any random noise you heard then, don't blame on me, that's my neighbour's chickens. Okay, so you're now going to want to follow what it says on the screen again. So PS button and just let the console go through the update. And my, my controller automatically kick clicked all of them then. Because <laughs> it's one of the ones that does all the jumping things, I've dropped it as well at the same time. So now checking for update, please wait. There you go, you just want to follow through this, and then, again, my controller pressed that button then. No. <laughs> okay, you want to go, you want to click accept, and then you want to click X. And the console will update, and I'll cut back when, well, I'll fast forward, and then I'll cut back when we are on the XMB. Okay, there we go, the update has completed. I believe I told the system to restart. I'll grab the controller just in case, it's behind me. Okay, there we go. So now, I know the controller I have is a very dodgy one. So we're gonna wanna go through the setup. 
I'm just going to hit the back of my controller. <laughs> okay, the console is going to be Spanish. <laughs> oh no. Okay, I'm going to change controller real quick. Oh, I might be able to do it now. Um, maybe, okay. Yeah, I'm going to try and turn this controller off before it does anything bad. Okay, so I've changed to a controller which should be a little more reliable this time. Okay, yes, yes, and then you're going to go through this. And just select everything, yes, because, again, people have seen this many times. I'm just going to leave the date as it is for now. User one, yes, yeah, sure. And not going to connect it to the internet just yet. I just want to see it boots the XMB. Test, make sure everything's okay. The fan hasn't kicked up on the console yet, which is a good sign. Which is a very good sign. But this is a drilled case, which I'm not sure if I've even shown in this video yet. But there we go. So we boots the XMB. It's on 4.910 FW. And the next step, I guess, is check whether the disk drive works. I did hit my chair with it whilst picking it up and the disk drive go flying, so it might have unplugged. But I'm going to give it a little test, see if it works, and yeah, I'll cut back. Okay, so it takes the disk in, but it doesn't go further than taking the disk in. So, okay, there is an issue with the disk drive, which I should be able to fix, but that's second rate for now, I'll sort that later. Okay, so now that I know that the system works, the next step is LED modding, which for the top case, will clip into these connectors here. And fingers crossed, will look good, because I tried to do it in another system, which I'll put on screen now, where it shines through these vents here, which is what the red LEDs at the bottom here are for, and I'm gonna try and replicate that on the top case. Whereas the last one, I put it down the side here, where the disk drive is, it didn't quite work. So the next phase is modding the top case for the LEDs, because I already did the bottom case earlier with LEDs in the fan and in the side. So, yeah, fun times. Okay, here I am back a couple of days later and the top case, as you can see here, is now modded. Um, yeah, I went a bit overkill. <laughs> um, I'm sure we had to put better pictures, but my soldering is really not that great. I had to melt the case here to sink the wires in. Um, covered these ones up, but I will put pictures of them ones in because they're actually quite cool. I just bridged two of the solders and yeah. This bit up here is a mess. I could have used a shorter wire there. However, I didn't think of that at the time because it was early morning when I did it. So, yeah, it's a mess, but it works. And the finishing touch for this is I'm going to use the original one of these for now. This may get changed later down the line because on another video I wrapped one of them and I still have that around. So that's potential to be used, so let's get that back on. I can't really do that on camera because it's fiddly and I've obstructed one of the hooks. So I'll cut back when that is on. Okay, so now that that is back together, it's good to go on the console. Um, for now, I'm leaving the fascia silver. However, as I said, that may get wrapped black. And yep, so to talk more through the LEDs that I have done, so all around the cutout, as you can see there, I've put LEDs and I've also done one here under these little lugs, which should shine down in the vent at the front of the console. So yeah, overall, there's a lot of power. I haven't actually tested it yet. I haven't actually tested it yet. However, I know that I've got continuity from positive at the end where I have the connectors to the end point which is here on both positive to the end point which is here so both positive and negative have connectivity which means theoretically the console should be all good so let's get the console together and test it ah yep okay i just spotted that this solder point here has broken 
Fun times. So I'm going to resolder that and get the console tested. Okay, so I have now completed that repair. I won't lie to you, the repair is very dodgy, so I might change the positive, well, I might change where I'm connecting to it to this side, where I have pin, um, yeah, pads that are actually in one piece, because it torn the pad off. I'm hoping it still works. I cannot be bothered to go get the multimeter to check it. So now the plan is connect everything up, make sure that the top case works and that the console all still functions as it should. So make sure you connect these the right way around if you LED mod your own console. Uh, positive to positive, negative to negative. And also make sure to isolate your connectors as well so they can't um, arc on each other. Positive to positive, negative to negative, there we go. And put the sleeves over them. And now being very careful, put the console back together. Making sure to not trap any wires anywhere where they're going to be um, screws or anything. Which in itself is not an easy task. So I'll cut back once I've got the lid on properly. Okay, so this time I managed to tear one of the pads off yet again to a point where it was completely irreparable. So what I've done this time is I've changed where I've soldered them to and I'm now going off of this one. So everything should still work the same, LEDs being LEDs, as long as the current runs the right way, you are you are completely fine. So before I do anything, I'm just going to check that the console still works. Make sure that these aren't touching each other because that will cause the console to have a fit. Okay, so there we go. We still have power and the disk drive has a disk in it. And another modification since last time is I have chopped the top of the disk drive out and cut the front of the metal plate out so you can still see that and everything basically still works as it should. It should still exclude dust from outside the console and as this shows the console is still working as it should. There is, I don't know if you can see by the reflection on my hand, there is LEDs underneath. Actually I can just do this now. You can see the LEDs in the fan area of the console. You won't see them as well at the minute. So now I'm going to switch the console off, which will take a while. And as soon as the console is turned off, I will turn it off at the back of it as well. Okay, there we go. Wait till the power's gone. And I'll plug the LEDs in at the top and see if they still work. Which I'm currently struggling with because I've packed the wires right down in there. So, my concern is where I'm now pulling the wires from is on top of the disk drive, so I've added a thickness there, uh, on top of the power supply even. So yeah, I've added a good thickness there. And I am slightly concerned that it might not work. Um, okay, let's just get that so that it is in shot, which I can do that way. There we go. Now I'll turn it back on at the back. Power the system up. There we go, you can see the LEDs here. They look pretty good. There's no crackling sounds, which is good. Which means that nothing's overheating. And yeah. So another reason why I took the top off the disk drive is even though I put electrical tape in to isolate this, um, I could hear it shorting out on the disk drive. So the easiest way of doing it was taking the risk away. So there's now plastic rather than metal for it to work on. So now I'm all happy that that works. Switch this off. And I guess unplug this and put it back together and I will cut back when it is together. Okay, so there is the top back on the console. Now let's check if everything still works as it should. Okay, we've got power. I don't hear any crackling, which is good. Just make sure the disk drive rejects the disk still, because I have been messing with geometry. Okay, that's going to need work because that doesn't work. <laughs> okay, so that's a minor problem. I can fix that one. I know what I've done wrong. And just as a visualisation so you guys can see how the system will look. That's it with the top case on. Just a nice gentle glow. Probably a bit over the top on one side. And yeah, looks pretty good. 
So now let me fix the Blu-ray drive because I've messed up and yeah, I'll cut back in and we'll get the console set up. One small side effect of the LEDs is they produce quite a bit of heat. So the fan on the console has kicked up already and it's been running for about five minutes. But however, I do have the console partially put back together and I'm going to toot my own horn a bit. It does actually look pretty cool. So, yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. So the next step is to try and make my old comp... Now the next step is try and make my old composite cables work. I was having colour issues with them, so I can get the next step on both PS3 and camera at the same time. So, fingers crossed, it works. So upon editing this video, I realised I didn't actually give a proper explanation for what happened. So this video is now going to be split into three different parts. So the first part is the one which is just here, assembling the console and getting it running. The second part is going to be repairing it, and the third part is going to be jailbreaking and setting up. So the reason why I'm saying repairing is because if you look here, and across the top case, there is waves on it. And if I slide the case off... Yeah, you see my reflection. Even on the inside, you can see marks on it. <laughs> Excuse the dog bark. If I zoom in here as well, you can see melting marks. So, what happened is in this corner here, again, that's where the temperature was. And there's a short here which caused the LEDs on this section here, this section here, across here, and here to go dark. And when they went dark, they created a lot of heat and melted the top case and that. This salvageable, that not. So, yeah, I've no, I guess I've got a lot of work to do. Thank you for watching this video. I shall see you in the next part. Thank you and goodbye. <sighs> right. This LED here shorted, for some reason this edge here which got the power gets hot and there was also a short here so I'm hoping that by fixing the shorts up here with that LED and there will stop this from overheating, that's all I can think of, yeah.